Welcome everyone to this webinar about pumps and hydraulic pump stimulation using the CFD. In particular, during the webinar, we are going to investigate how modern CFD on the cloud tools can provide us not only with a CFD software, but also with the hardware resources required to run a properly a simulation. This webinar is part of a series of webinar which started in April and is going to last until mid of end of May. We have already talked about heating ventilation of car parks and valve simulations. You can check out these webinars we previously did on our YouTube channel. And there are going to be three more webinars at least on wind tunnel simulation, buildings and architecture simulation, and the last one, a stress analysis, so mechanical simulations on the cloud. Few words about Conself. Uh, I am Ruggiero Poletto, and as I've just said, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of the whole company. The company it was incorporated in April 2015, and we have our headquarters in Milan. Another other operative locations are scattered across the country, across Italy. But we are also expanding our distributors network worldwide. For the moment, you can see we have one in Croatia, one more in China and South Korea. In here, you can also check out our references, such as the website, which we are going to discover later during the webinar. Also, our LinkedIn uh, page, uh, on which I suggest you to to follow the news we publish in that. Well, how and what exactly we do? Basically, we offer at least three different types of services. The first one is the simulation platform on the cloud, I've just mentioned before. Uh, it is accessible directly through our website at the address app, so app.conself.com. By using this, this uh, simulation platform, you can run both fluid dynamics and structural uh, analysis directly from your browser, so without installing anything on your PC. We provide also cloud computing service, uh, a paper user uh, access to the computing power we have, from which you can run uh, a multiple type of software. So I invite you to visit the cloud computing page we have on our website. Last, but obviously not least, we also have an engineering consulting activity in which we offer our experience to optimize the design and by using the simulation we can achieve great results, in particular in terms of performances. Moving to the topic of this webinar, uh, as we said, we want to simulate a blade, so an impeller of a centrifugal pump. This is a, a simple centrifugal pump with a, a backwards blended blades. On top right, you can actually see the geometry we are about to simulate. This is not the full impeller, it is just a slice of the whole impeller. Uh, this is because we want to use the periodic boundary condition in order to reduce the number of cells we're about to simulate. So the left and right faces, we are going to apply later a periodicity boundary condition. Obviously, at the middle of this slice, you can uh, see the blade which is very important for the simulation because we don't want the flow to detach from the blade and we also are going to measure the pressure along the blade in order to avoid phenomena such as um, cavitation. Obviously, we have an inlet at the top in yellow and an outlet boundary condition uh, on gray, uh, sorry, in orange at the bottom. 
As I said, uh, everything uh, is uh, also related with the EU regulation named ERP, energy related products, in particular the, the, name, the one, the 547 of 2012, which was released a few years ago. This regulation specifies a target efficiency to be achieved, to be reached by all the pumps. And this uh, target efficiency depends on the volume flow, on the rotational speed, and on a certain coefficient C. This coefficient varies year to year. Actually, the last variation was uh, in 2015, in which we moved from EMA 0.1 to EMA 0.4. And this uh, forces forced actually the designer and the engineers to put a higher efficiency for their pumps. There are two more parameters uh, prescribed by the regulation and these are the partial load efficiency, so it's an efficiency, a target efficiency at 0.75, the volume, the flow rate at the best efficiency point. And then there is uh, an overload target efficiency to be reached at 110% of the best efficiency point. In this way, the regulation prescribes a very simple curve of, of above of which we have to, to put, we have to find the, the efficiency of the pump we are designing. So, let's go and check how with Consul you can actually calculate and simulate uh, a function of such type of impeller. So we can go directly to the Conself website. I just type conself.com and uh, in uh, one second when the website finishes the load, uh, uh, this is it. This is the home page of Conself website. Uh, it's worth a while mentioning that I am using uh, Google Chrome. It's a, a standard web, uh, a standard, uh, a standard browser. But you could use any browser you want, such as Firefox or Internet Explorer. In order to access the application, you have to go to the login page. After a few seconds, you'll be forward, forwarded to this page on which uh, you can register if you don't have an account already. I invite you to register because we have a, a free plan available for you to run the CFD simulations. Or you can log in using your uh, user and password you, you, you set up previously. So here it is. This is the uh, dashboard of the application from which you can actually see the credits so the CPU time you can still use on your remote on our remote server and uh, also there, is, there are a few more pages we are gonna see later on during during this during this webinar let's move and let's start by talking and creating the uh, simulations as I said before. So let's move to the simulation page. From here we have three menus. The first one is useful to create a new case and then there is a, a second one from which you can access old cases and then there is uh, this rectangle at the bottom of, of the screen from which you can actually check uh, all the simulations that are currently in progress. So we move in here into the creation of the new case section and we start creating a new case. First of all, since concept provide vertical application from which you can actually run anything you want, we are going to select the CFD Turbo application, single reference frame pumps. Um, we call it impeller, sorry, so single reference frame impeller. I create the case 
and uh, suddenly I am asked to upload the geometry uh, uh, that I have to to make with uh, any CAD, any CAD, uh, any 3D model software. Uh, keep in mind that Concelf provide uh, a step by step way of setting up the whole simulation. The first step is it is obviously geometry. In this step, we need to upload the geometry file and uh, define, for instance, the boundaries and define, for instance, the uh, unity of the files. Then there are going to be a mesh 2D and a mesh 3D sections from which we generate a surface mesh, so triangles, and a volume mesh. After the meshing generation, there is going to be a CFD setting part, and finally the results analysis. So let's start by uploading the geometry. In my desktop, I have this step file. Conself can actually handle step file IGAS file and also STL files. So this is the impeller as we saw before. We are going to define all the boundaries. So we have to mention that this is a periodicity, the first periodicity, and this boundary on the right hand side is the second periodicity. I just go ahead by selecting this internal surface in the middle of the slice, which is obviously the blade. I am now selecting this top su surface, which is the inlet surface, and also these two parts over here, which are the outlet. All the remaining surfaces can be selected by going into this selection and select all the drop down menu. And I just create a simple wall boundary. This contains all the shrouds and, and hub. So I move on and I just select uh, the internal type of flow. I think this is the only choice available for the app we are using right now. So I'm now submitting the, the step, the geometry step, and uh, in here uh, the uh, software automatically analyzes the uh, impeller geometry for errors or for problems that may lead to uh, an unsuccessful simulation in the, the later phases. It shouldn't take long, it should be just a few seconds, so if we wait a little bit longer, we should, here it is. Now we can see that the process moved from the cases in progress window, it, it disappeared from here, so I have, I have it here, so impeller, I can open it, and here we are. Now we are in the mesh 2D phase, so I just select once again the geometry step I'm going to use and this is the new pump as we can see very very nice we are starting now to define the sizes the, the, the sizes of the triangles we want to divide the surface and uh, obviously uh, according to the sizes of this impeller it, it is just 20 centimeters wide we are going to use a, a size of one millimeter almost everywhere, except on the periodicity zone, on which we use a, a slightly bigger size of five millimeters. So I just type 0, 0 0.5. On the blade, uh, a size of 0, 0, 001. Inlet, once again, 0, 0, 001 millimeter. And outlet one millimeter and wall one millimeter. All right, so probably I forgot to say the parameters we are selecting here. We have the sizes of the triangles and the uniformity level of the triangles. 
So by selecting this, we define the dimension of these triangles and with the uniformity level, we define the uh, distance, the uh, increase, the rate of increase of, of uh, size of these triangles when there are two different sizes in two different surfaces. So having done that, I can submit the simulation once again, and here it is. Now the process in background starts working, and uh, it is still, and this time it's, it is not analyzing the geometry, but uh, we are actually creating the 3D mesh, I'm sorry, the 2D mesh with all the triangles available. So it shouldn't take long, it should take just a few minutes, but uh, it's worth a while while the, the whole thing is, is working to, to go and check some other sections together, like the storage. This is a, a brand new section we have just introduced. This uh, shows you how you're using your remote storage. So you can actually decide whether uh, delayed uh, a case you, you previously run, or you can have statistics such as the free uh, disk you're using and, and the amount of megabyte you are actually using. And the amount of megabyte it, it is also reported according to the lab, to the latest ten simulations. So moving back, the mesh 2D phase finished, and here it is. As you can see, we are now in the 3D phase. So here it is. I'll start the 3D mesh, and here it is. It is once again the same geometry, but this time there is a massive difference. We can actually see all the small triangles we have just generated, all right? And uh, it is also possible to visualize the different sizes we chose in different places, such as a bigger sizes where the uh, periodicity boundary condition is going to be applied later on. So in this moment, uh, we are here to define the 3D mesh. So we are here to define what's, what we are going to see inside inside of, of our of our uh, of our uh, impeller so we define once again a dimension this time it's not for the triangles on the surface this time is for the tetrahedral inside of the mesh this is a standard dimension of one millimeters we maintain the same values in the boundary, in the boundary, in the boundary treatment, you can actually apply the extrusion of a boundary layer by defining the number of the layers and the size of the first cell at the wall. For the purpose of the current simulation, of uh, we just want to skip it because it's a more advanced level to understand how to set up these 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 parameters. So I'm just clicking submit and I'll proceed. Once again, the process goes in background and we can see the simulations running with the progress bar. While it is running, I just want to go a little bit and show you the user manual available from the bottom left uh, button. And uh, in here you are reported all the settings available in the software with, uh, for instance, uh, a description of the vertical applications I mentioned before. There are like uh, uh, continuous definitions of all the screenshots and dashboards and utilities you have. And uh, there is also obviously a description of a step-by-step uh, setup of the simulation with uh, what is affected by all the parameters you are required to insert in order to run the simulation. <coughs> Sorry. You can see we are now at 80% of, of the meshing creation. It should be finished 
in uh, in in a few moments. Uh, let's uh, wait uh, a little bit longer. Meanwhile, it's also worth a while remembering that you can get access and contact the support service available 24-7. Uh, there is this button uh, just below the user manual, contact support. And in here, you can actually uh, describe the problem you have just had and uh, get a, a, a quick reply to the problem. Here it is, the impeller, the impeller mesh is now completed, so we can open. And uh, as we can imagine, we are now in the CFD simulation, in the CFD setup. So we just connect the CFD to the latest mesh we produced. It will take a few seconds to upload the mesh. But uh, uh, it's worth, I, I would like also to introduce a new feature. Uh, we also, because we now create these mesh quality parameters, and this is uh, a simple tool that uh, analyzes the mesh and provides in red all the cells from which you can expect to have some ge geometrical issues. So, uh, for this few cells, it would be good to restart and generate uh, a higher refined mesh in that area. And uh, uh, while on the blue area, everything seems to work properly. So there is nothing really wrong, but there is still one or two uh, poor quality cells in this area. It's not, it's not uh, intention of this webinar going uh, into higher level of details of the mesh generation, but obviously inside of Concel, you are provided a full set of tools to increase, to keep increasing the quality of the mesh even in these regions. But we now, we now we're going to now just move and uh, select the uh, fluid model. In a single reference frame from this particular impeller, we just have an incompressible flow model. We're just simulating water, basically, or air at low speed. And uh, you have the most popular uh, turbulence models available on the market, such as K Epsilon, K Omega SST, and Spalart Tamaras. I'm going to pick Spalart Tamaras for this tutorial. Obviously, you need to insert the center of rotation. In here, the impeller is rotating along the Y axis and with a, a speed of 1440 RPM, rounds per minute. <coughs> so it, it, is, it is quite easy to do this. You can modify the speed or modify the axis quite easily. And then obviously, you need to select the boundaries. As we defined in the geometry step, we defined period one to be a periodicity boundary. So I just pick a periodicity a rotation boundary. Then there is period two, it's once again periodicity rotation. The software automatically matches them, so it will automatically find uh, one, it will automatically couple one with the other. So we have the blade, which is a non-rotating wall. We have the inlet. Uh, it is possible to define an absolute or relative velocity inlet. Uh, in our simulation, we just use uh, an absolute velocity. It, it goes down because it comes from the top and it has a value of minus 1.4 U absolute in Y direction. And then there is the uh, hydraulic diameter, which is fine for the current simulation. We have uh, an outlet boundary condition, uh, in which, which is applied here at the right, at the, these two right surfaces. And uh, this just provides a, a pressure, basically. It is compulsory to have it. And then we have all the remaining walls on which we apply uh, non-rotating walls. 
Last but not least, we can uh, uh, define the time evolution. We just have a steady simulation and the number of iterations and uh, the uh, frequency, the output frequency. I would like to say that uh, some of the parameters we inserted are not uh, modifiable in, in free plans, but uh, uh, they will be uh, assigned default values. So you can still use the, the software and, and test it, but you won't be able to modify some of the parameters. So once again, submit the simulation. Everything works uh, as we did uh, in the previous steps. Here it is. So we have the CFD running in background. Usually the CFD part is the longest one. It takes uh, the, the bigger amount of time, the biggest amount of time uh, compared to all the other steps, in particular compared to the mesh generation we, we, we saw before. <coughs> so make sure you have enough credits to run the simulation. Probably I didn't say, but credits are, uh, let's say, equivalent somehow to the uh, amount of time you are using the server. So each credit is equals to uh, one hour of usage in our remote server. So make sure you have enough credits, otherwise the simulation won't run. So here it is, the simulation is still running in background. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I would like also to uh, have a quick overview on the pricing we have available directly on our e-commerce. Since we introduced the uh, credits uh, right now, going directly to our uh, website, you can actually check out the three of the, the three plans you can activate yourself. So there is, as I said, a welcome pack from which you can get access just to 20 credits per month. We also have a freelance pack, which costs about 200 euros per month, actually a little bit less, and gives you 250 credits per month. Obviously, we have uh, a plans for enterprises, this is 990 euros per month and uh, it, it gives you 1500 credits so you are all invited to uh, choose the plan that most that is most suitable to your needs or to contact us in case you have any particular requirements for uh, bigger usage or uh, different type or different type of applications. I also invite you to have a look at uh, the activities we are doing in Consul. So we have uh, quite a few blog activities. We also have the release notes from which you can see the updates on the software and uh, also the events we are publishing and uh, you can actually have a quick overview of the calendar of the event. Here it is, as, as we can see, while the simulation is running, we can go anywhere else uh, on the website or shut down the, uh, the computer even, because uh, the simulation runs on, on our remote server. So you don't need to use anything in order to uh, run the simulation. While the results are loading, we can have a quick overview at the residuals, which are displayed at the end of the calculation. This is the image. Uh, you can see that there is a little bit of oscillation, but after 100 iteration, obviously we haven't reached yet the full converged solution, but you can see we are on the way to go there. Obviously, it is possible to download results on your local computer and post-process them with the software such as Paraview. But I want to show you now the capabilities of the uh, Consel CFD post-processing uh, directly online.
So let's start visualizing the pressure. So I'll activate it. Here it is. So as we can expect, we have a higher pressure towards the outlet and a lower pressure at the inlet. But at the same time, we can see we have a negative pressure in between. This means that uh, we may have some uh, cavitational problem. It's worth a while remembering that this simulation has not reached the full converged solution. So it would be better to run it for a longer amount of iterations, but we still have some feedbacks from the simulation. Another nice tool is the stream tracer, from which uh, we can uh, actually run and, and uh, from which we can actually see the uh, flow particles uh, inside of, of, of the impeller. So I'll just add a transparency to the uh, impeller. So we can see here in the transparent impeller. And uh, I'm going to use the relative velocity in order to see the relative uh, particle track. So let's just define the center of the point source to be the origin. So 0, 0.0. We define the 10,000 points and a radius of uh, 0 0.01 about. It should be okay. Uh, probably I need a bigger radius. Here it is. These are the flows of the particles inside of the impeller. We can still keep modifying, modifying uh, the uh, dimension here it is and we can for instance apply the velocity the local velocity so a URL velocity here it is so we have in blue the area where we have a lower velocity and in red the highest velocity so this is quite good for our uh, let's say analysis right now and obviously if you want to save just a screenshot we can click on this disk image capture and by right clicking save the image and in this way we can actually have uh, a quick view and uh, a quick post processing having said that i'll move back to the presentation because we finished with uh, the possibility to run uh, on the cloud uh, I said before and uh, here it is uh, we can uh, now move on to the question and answer uh, part of the webinar so I invite you to click on the, the icons as suggested in uh, this uh, small picture because sometimes it's quite confusing how you can get to the question and answer uh, tool and meanwhile, I just want to remember that we are available on the most popular social networks. And also, it's worth while stressing that on YouTube, we are going to upload the video and of the present webinar and of any other webinar we may run in future. So let's check if there is any question. Well, there is one. Uh, it's, it's something I said before. Uh, it is about uh, the simulations in background. Uh, I keep in mind that everything we showed you today, it is just a CFD on the cloud, actually a simulation on the cloud tool. So you can run any simulation you want. And when the process is in background, means that the process runs on console server. So you don't need to uh, use your own computer or computing power. So you can even shut down your computer, turn off the internet connection and move somewhere else. Having said this, it is important to note that uh, since it is a cloud service, 
This service, it is available everywhere. So from any computer, you can log in and check the status of your simulations just by using your email and password. At the same time, this architecture allows a multiple user to use the same account. We don't mind whether there are two or three or even more people using that as long as the number of credits is positive as there are in, as long as there are enough credits to run the simulation one more question probably about the results accuracy well it, it's highly dependent on on the meshing phase first of all it is important to keep in mind the, the mesh affects the results because it defines a resolution. Uh, in particular, close to the wall, it is important to maintain the famous value Y plus into acceptable uh, ranges. So keep in mind that. Having said this, uh, regarding the uh, other parameters like first or second order simulation, uh, it is important to note that most of the choices are made in background by console, so you don't have to mind about that. Another question is about the parallelization of the CFD solver. Uh, I didn't say it before, probably, but I want to, to remember that uh, the CFD solver we are using is OpenFoam. It is actually a fork of OpenFoam. We keep up to date and it is available for, to download for all of you. We call it Concept Kai. Well, uh, in this particular, uh, because we, we are branch of OpenFoam, we can run obviously parallel simulations. Uh, for the moment, uh, the number of processors, uh, it's, it is not chosen by the user. It is automatically detected by the solver according to two parameters. The uh, resources available in that moment and the mesh sizes. So according to these two parameters, the so, uh, automatically the software detects the number of, of optimum number of processes and runs, and runs on all the processes. So you don't have to care about parallelization, basically. Oh, there is one question about uh, uh, future webinars. Yes, in particular, I want to remember the uh, stress analysis webinar because this month we are here also to launch the mechanical solution. It is a very simple mechanical analysis. It's just a static linear elastic analysis, but it is still quite useful to uh, run uh, simulations in quite a few cases, in particular like uh, uh, isotropic materials like uh, iron, steels, etc. And to analyze whether this material can resist to uh, static loads. Uh, there will be a webinar about mechanical analysis later in, in April. Uh, if I remember correctly, it should be on April the 19th the same time as today. So the English webinar is going to be at 3 p.m. Uh, European, Central European time. One more question is about uh, uh, the geometry, if there is a limitation to the geometry. Well, to be honest, there is no limitation, but at the same time, we recommend to uh, provide, let's say, good quality. Uh, CAD files. And by good quality, I mean that first of all, for a CFD simulation, as you saw today, uh, you have to model not the solid but the fluid. So it is uh, somehow the negative part. Secondly, it is always important when you run a simulation to keep in mind that most of the time you need to neglect small, small uh, features like small sharp edges or other small elements. 
And uh, this, uh, for the moment, is not automatically, so the geometry is not automatically simplified by Conself, but for the moment it is manually done by the user. Uh, the Conself capabilities at the moment are uh, to check the quality of the file and to provide information about the error about the, 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 the problem and what cause caused it. So it gives you information how to modify the geometry to run to run the simulation correctly. Uh, another question about updates. Uh, well, uh, Conself keeps updating the application. Usually, we release uh, uh, bug fixes or minor uh, advancements every month. We maintain the old cases, so every you, there, there is no uh, a problem with uh, using old cases, and you won't be asked to uh, do anything else other than logging into our web application. We take care of uh, any other problem. Uh, related with the update. At the same time, there is there are no consequences for the credits you bought. So basically, if you buy some credits with a certain version of console, they are valid uh, throughout any update we may release in future. So you can still use your credits, your remaining credits for future console releases. Let's see if there is one more question. Uh, I'll wait uh, for a few seconds more for latest questions. Uh, once again, I invite you all to uh, follow us, in particular on LinkedIn, because we provide uh, continuous news about uh, our activities and our updates, such as exhibitions, such as new software release, such as polls, there is now, if you go to our website, for instance, uh, there is a poll in which every user can express its uh, desire or its need for a particular vertical application that uh, may be used to run uh, a certain type of, of CFD or of, of structural analysis. It seems that we are uh, running out of, of questions. So I thank you all for uh, taking part to the webinars. It was really a pleasure for me having you as a guest. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I hope you may now take advantage, obviously, of all the concept uh, activities we, we, we showed you. So feel free to contact us also through our, our email address, which is written below, info at .com. And uh, from me, I think it's everything. So once again, thank you all and, and goodbye.